now impact every continent on the planet. Believe it or not, there's actually enough water to satisfy global needs. For more insight, we're joined now by Upmanu Lal. He's the director of Columbia University's Water Center. Uh, the big question, if there's enough water on Earth to satisfy demand, why are we witnessing a crisis? So the main challenge that we face is that the way water is distributed on the planet in space and in time is variable. So we don't have water where we need it, when we need it. And uh, the segment you just ran on China exemplifies that with the transfer from the south to the north. Historically, the way engineers and politicians have approached the solution to this problem is by building infrastructure, just exactly the China story that we just went through. And I think we are at a time where we have to recognize that the way we use water and the way we need to reuse water has to be thought through and brought to the forefront to address exactly these kind of problems. Let me ask you this. Uh, by 2025, world population will be higher by about 1 billion. When it comes to water, are we approaching the point, or have we already reached it, where demand exceeds what's considered sustainable use? So we have to think about what we mean by demand. If it is what people are using and what is withdrawn from the water bodies, then we are already in trouble uh, in most places. Uh, in the United States, we have seen what the drought in Texas, the drought in California, and the depletion of the aquifers in the Midwest has been bringing to us. Uh, at least locally, uh, people in those areas are very aware of the issue. However, if I look at the major users of water, this is agriculture, this is the production of energy, um, the efficiency with, with which we operate today are much, much lower than what they need to be. And this is due in part to the fact that we often don't even charge as much for the water as it costs to develop and supply it to people because we believe that water is so essential that it, we need to subsidize it heavily. So there's not an adequate signal to promote people reusing water. In the urban setting, uh, we could, and in the industrial setting, we could dramatically increase the amount of water we could treat and reuse, even at the point of use. And if we did that, the load that we put on the environment and the load we put on the resource would decrease dramatically. You're, you're talking about treating water. I'm curious, uh, pollution in places like China is a huge issue. Once a groundwater supply is tainted, how difficult is it to treat it or to fix the water? Okay, so if you contaminate groundwater, it is rather difficult to treat it in place because groundwater moves very slowly. So you would have to work quite hard to uh, decontaminate it. However, at the point of use, uh, we could change the game substantially. So our model today is that we treat water for drinking purposes or for, for industrial purposes to the quality that we want. Then the wastewater that is produced, which is usually most of the water that you diverted, um, we either dispose of, uh, which leads to environmental pollution, or we treat it to a certain level and then dump it back in the river. So what I'm arguing is that if that wastewater were treated just a little bit more, you, it would be usable right away. And then the money that you're spending and the energy that you're spending uh, on treating the wastewater for disposal purposes would actually be put to a use which is much more beneficial. Upmanu Lal, joining us from New York. Thank you for your insights. Appreciate it.